he definitely was a, a pillar, man. You know, like uh um yeah. he definitely was a pillar in hip hop. You know, I did a, a live set last night, um, playing all of his music. And, you know, he's just one of the most creative people that I've seen, you know. Hello, hello, you know, Governor, that's my joint right there, you know. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The video, the whole concept, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as well as other others, you know what I'm saying? So it's a huge loss. You know, I know we all have to make the transition, you know, but um yeah. man, I'm, I'm gonna miss that guy, you know. Rest oh yeah. Peace. Uh any stories or like uh production stories you had with him or heard about or did no, you know? I know I, I I never got a chance to work with him or anything like that. I was just a huge fan of him. Yeah, I got some uh this one joint with him and uh Ghostface. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, I'm playing right now. But yeah, Doom, I got hip to him uh probably like a couple years back and it's like yeah all caps you know uh yeah, mad villain yeah, album yeah, yeah. Crazy, man the mad villain album De accordion you know what i'm saying oh yeah fancy crown man that yeah. that helped me do a breakup man yeah. <laughs> like man yeah, she, he, she was trash man yeah <laughs> right 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 hey yeah, man um, you with it what's your uh what's your favorite uh mf doom project what do you have a favorite project mad, mad villain that would okay. be it yeah, I like Doomsday and uh, you know, mm, food and yeah, but I think that's definitely probably in my top rotation. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. He just he rap. He can make anything sound good. Like he just and, put and, anything and, together. <laughs> right, and and he was not only an MC, he was a producer. You know what I'm saying? He made tracks. Oh yeah, so he was he was well versed, man, in all the elements. So and then you know, uh. His group wasn't it? Uh, was it KMD Peach Fuzz KMD, or something? Yeah, Peach Fuzz. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh my gosh, I'm losing it right now. Um, KMD, that was his name, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, yep. Yeah, that was him. Yeah, that's his name. He changed his name to uh, um, uh, MF Doom later. Yeah. Cause he was in the uh, Gas Face video. Yep. Gas. With, uh, third, third base. Yeah. Third base, man. <laughs> I think they later on end you know, up falling off. Like I seen um an interview, they was talking about how um third base said like how he helped rock him with uh, a record and it wasn't true. <laughs> it's like oh yeah 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 they, that, that was, was later crazy. on. I think uh, who put that that narrative out there? I forgot who it was. Liar liar Cohen maybe. Yeah, Leo, yeah Cohen. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, yeah, Search was upset about that. He said that's that ain't what happened. And he was yeah. real. I remember him getting online and, and talking about that, man, because he was like, that's not the way that went. No one said and people wrote, wrote rhymes for Rakim. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah. we didn't believe that anyway. We know, oh, we know nah. Rakim ain't had no ghostwriter. You know what I'm saying? Oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah. You know, microphone yeah. fame, lyrics are fair. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Um, shoot. What, um, I guess what, what was um what brought you into hip hop? Like, what was the first record that it's like, yeah, I gotta do this for a career? Like, what made you, what made you like become a DJ and all that? What what influenced you? Well, what? it's a, a couple of things, you know. Um, okay. Well, for one, my my dad is a musician, so my dad played percussion for Parliament Funkadelic. So, Crazy. I was I was in the studio all the time with them, you know, growing up. And I witnessed that. I, wit I witnessed the studio life at an early age, so I, I was influenced musically, but didn't know I w didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? I just was yeah. looking at my dad go to work. Like this is what he does, and this is what I, I'm in here, and I'm watching all these people not knowing they make getting ready to make great songs like Flashlight and uh, One Nation Under a Groove and all of that stuff. You know, I, I witnessed that stuff as as a little kid, but didn't realize what it was. It's just music. You know what I'm saying? That's and now. Cool. Yeah, now that I'm grown up, you know, I was able to be a, uh, like when I was seven years old, my first recording was on a Bootsy Collins album. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm like, sing, not really singing, but shouting, shouting Bootsy's name and um, and playing this little whistle. I played, kind of played percussion. And so I got album Man. credits and everything. You know what I'm saying? My name is on the record and everything. So, and that was at seven years old. And that's just from being in the studio with my dad, you know? Yeah. Um, far as being a DJ, um, man, my, the first big record, you know, I used to break dance. So my yeah, yeah. first, the, the, you know what I'm saying? The first big record that uh, I 
kind of fell in love with, you know what I'm saying? And, and I hate to bring it up, but 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 that's what it is. Um was uh Africa Bambada's uh Planet Rock. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Planet Rock Planet Rock really did that for me. That's the first record I ever bought for myself. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I wanted to break dance to it and, and you know my dad had all, bought me a turntable early in my yeah. you know, because he was into music. So my room had a record player and tape deck and all of that stuff. He made sure I had those things as a, as a kid. So right. um I just I used to, he used to constantly buy me records like craft work, you know what I'm saying, and you know, techno, the early techno stages and all that stuff. And so I was always listening. And then by me being the age that I was um back then, hip hop was just emerging, you know? Yeah. So you had groups like Run DMC and you know, the Fat Boys and uh, Joe Ski Love and you know, you know, UTFO, people like that. Yeah. All of those early pioneers, man. You know, that's all I listen to. Ice T, you know what I'm saying? So Ice T, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So colors, every, that colors record was crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Every everything from the, that era, man. Like in the the, uh, the 80s, man. That's that's really what I grew up on. And yeah. so when when the movie Crush Groove came out, I saw uh, Jam Master J do his solo in there. Uh, where he was scratching Run's name before Run came out on stage. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, run, 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 zip, 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 run. I was like, oh man, that's cold, man. I wish I knew how to do that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I went and started practicing on, my grandmother had a turntable. She had like a portable turntable, man, that she had in the attic with detachable yeah. speakers and all of that. And that's what I started playing with it. My dad caught me playing with it. And he was like, don't you need some real equipment? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I ain't got no money for that. You know what I'm saying? And he bought me these turntables right here. I, I got, still got them right right here. You can see them. That's dope, man. <laughs> yeah, that was like 30, 32 years ago, man. I still use the same turntables. I just got plates on them so that they turn, you know, they look white. But underneath the plates is the real turntable. They still got my name on them and everything. Yeah, man, that's fire, man. Uh, and also, you mentioned breakdancing. Um, we recently lost a legend uh, from breaking, you know, rest in peace. Oh yeah, break. yeah, Sh Shabadoo, man. Shabadoo, yep. They used man. to, yeah, Shabadoo was a, a, a huge influence too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, him him and uh, Turbo and Ozone, that was their names in in, uh, in breaking. And uh, people, you know, that was one of the jokes they used to call me uh, Shabadoo, you know what I'm saying? Oh, Cause I had, yeah, cause I had the wavy hair and all of that oh, type yeah, of yeah. stuff. And like, I see yeah. it, I see it. Yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah, they that was one of the jokes they used to they, uh say to me. Yeah, man. Uh, shoot. I know. Uh, I was watching uh the show called Lip Sync and uh Comet. You know what I'm saying? He was performing, you know, LL Cool J show, him Lip Sync. But yeah, Comet. He started break dancing. Like, yo, Comet. Oh yeah. Comet got that bag. And uh, I even heard yeah. Jada Kiss can break dance. I haven't seen Jada? it. Oh yeah, I believe I heard that. Jada Kiss can break dance, man. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of people, man. Like the the older cats, mm -hmm. like the people my age. Like I'm 48. So people my age, they was into all of the elements, you know what I'm saying? Which, yeah. Whether it be gra graffiti, MCing, you know what I'm saying? Making beats, sampling, do it, just anything. You know, we the whole hip hop culture, there was no rules. It's like, I want to do this. I want to scratch too. That's why Rakim know how to DJ. A lot of people don't know he can scratch. Yeah, yep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think Large Professor, he uh he pretty much told that story, I think one time that mm -hmm. someone was in the basement and all of a sudden, Somebody came up. It was where I came. Like he was in the basement creating. It was dope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like even Large Professor, same same thing. He's an MC and a producer. Yep. Uh, main you know source. What I'm yep. Yeah. Main source. Your, that's right. Yeah. What's your favorite? Do you have like a favorite producer list? Like you mentioned, Large Professor. Who's mm -hmm. on that list as well? He's on there. I don't have a a list that I've put together, but I can name some definitely. Yeah, I know Pete Rock is definitely legendary. Definitely. You know? I think Q-Tip is uh, yeah, side yeah. Dr. Dre, for real. Yep. Dilla, you can't forget Dilla. You know what I'm saying? Dilla was an alien, man. You man. know what I'm saying? And he hometown legend. So I always put him in there, at the, not at the very top, but in there somewhere, you know? Hey, Dilla, he might be top. He might probably top five, man, because his Definitely. influence. Definitely. Because he, he did what he did with D'Angelo and, um, you and, know, Common. And, uh, Common and uh, Erica Badu and Buster and you know you name it, man. Just he, and his 
his influence is still here, man. I see everybody still trying to emulate what he did. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Like, he was the alien with, with sampling. Like, nobody oh, yeah. can match him. It was so great. He definitely, like, far as if I want to say create creative hip hop producers, he he the top. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's the top, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then you got Primo, you know what I'm saying? But far as Sonics, Sonic would be Dre. You know what I'm saying? Dr. Dre right. is like, he always yeah. been my hero with the Sonic in the, in the way that he, he know, he can catapult people's careers and things of that nature. Definitely, you know? yeah. So yeah. I, as far as a, a well-rounded producer, it would have to be Dre because he will take an artist and develop it into something big. You know I what did. I'm saying? I, I was watching this thing on Jay Dilla a couple of days ago, like how uh, pretty much he, you know what I'm saying? He went to every other genre, and then the guy that, that ran the store seen him in the rock and roll section. Like, hey, man, yeah. <laughs> I, mastered, I, already, like, I already mastered everything in here, man. I already yeah. been in every crate in here, so I'm in this yeah. section. <laughs> and, yeah. like, he was so organized with his records, it was crazy. Like, he would know exactly who took what record, just how everything Bro. was set up in his place. It was crazy. Like, his brother I, took the record, and then he brought it back. So, yeah, you took my record, didn't you? <laughs> mm -hmm. I got a dealer story. I, I met Dilla. I, I met Dilla on maybe two occasions. So I'm going over to my brother DJ Dez's house. I don't know if you're familiar with DJ Dez, but he's huge uh, DJ here in in you know in Detroit, and we, we're part of a, a turntable crew called the Twelve Tech, Tech Mob. Twelve Tech Mob. He he started the crew back in the day with Lynn Swine, uh, Shotgun, and uh, and Daddy Riff. Yeah. Uh, so um, they uh, may be an honorable uh, member later on, like in recent years, like in the last four, I want to say three, four years, they, they may be an honorable mem member of the group. But uh, I was, I'm coming over, going over to Dez's house, and um, I'm trying to either take him something or pick something up, probably some records. Okay. And Dilla was over his house. Yeah. And Dilla comes out of his, side door and uh i said oh what's up jd you know what i'm saying john doe you know he was john doe back in the day john doe you know donuts man, man. <laughs> yep. yeah so i'm like oh what's up man you know i always knew about him you know because he was making all the beats for everybody on the east side of detroit you know what i'm saying and like on the west side i'm from the west so i didn't really bump into him like that you know he would come over here to the the uh, hip-hop shop you know what i'm saying i live not too far from the shop yeah, and still, still do. You know what I'm saying? Like it's right around the corner, basically. So, um, he's coming out, and he's like, he's like, "What's up, uh, Lo DJ Lowe's? What's up, man?" I said, "What's up, Dilla? You know what I'm saying?" Well, we didn't call him Dilla then. We called him uh, John Dome, JD. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and uh, he said, "Man, I heard those beats that you uh, that you let Dez have a copy of. I had let Dez have keep a beat tape or something. We used to exchange like that." Yeah. And he said, I, that one beat you made called Interference, man, I like that. He said, you took the bass note from Bugging Out from Tribe Call Quest. You took the drums from the Weather Report. You took the snare from this record. You took the this, the, the. he went down my whole, he dissected my whole beat in front of me. Man. Like I said, how you, how you do that, man? You know what I'm saying? How you know where I got everything from? You know what I'm saying? He was like, he said, man, I'll be digging in the crates. I be digging, yeah. you know, and that's my only dealer story. Story, you know what I'm saying? I was like, wow, that because that blew my mind that he he knew yeah. each sound that I used. I'm thinking I'm being clever, and and he liked it, so it was clever. But yeah, that's crazy. he dissected it immediately. Like I know where you got all of them sounds from. Like <laughs> I used all of them before. <laughs> it's like man, that's crazy. Yep. Yeah, I heard like he used to um like on records, you know, sampling and all that. He used to like make a dot on drums and certain yeah. sections of uh it's yeah he was a technician man he was the purest you know uh, it says me he passed away at 32 you know uh, yeah. i got familiar with him actually on uh the light you know with common of course okay okay man what happened to, like yo jay dilla man i keep hearing about this jay dilla guy like yeah mm -hmm. he was he was definitely before his time for sure yeah. man yeah legend man but uh what you rank uh, like Pharrell, man? I feel like Pharrell been all over the place, man. I feel like Pharrell oh, he definitely, definitely up you know, there. The, like, the Neptunes, it, it ain't him by it ain't him by itself a lot of times. Like Chad. the production, 
Yeah, yeah Chad, him and Chad together, they just got a good chemistry, man. You know, the tunes, man, they they definitely up there as far as production, you know. And they, they got hit records like they they probably got more hits as a production team than a lot of producers. Yeah, man. You know they, what I'm saying? They helped out Noriega. Uh, yeah. Flips. And then yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin so, Timberlake, man. It yeah. goes across the board, man. Yeah, so they Michael definitely Jackson, up there. Star Michael Trek, Jackson yeah. wanted some help, bro. He wanted yeah. some records. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I heard that uh, that story recently where he was like, uh, for he got Pharrell to do some track. Pharrell said it. That that was he was on Drink tra- Champs, I think. Yeah, salute and, the Drink Champs. Yeah. Yep, yep. And he was like, uh, he said Michael wanted some of his production, and he sent him some beats. And then I guess uh, Mike's manager at the time was like, Mike said, uh, he don't want none of that crap, man. He said he want that stuff that you give in Noriega. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought that was deep. Cause Mike mm-hmm. was—he always had his ear to the streets, whether people knew that or not. My dad uh, used to tell me that. He said Michael Jackson ain't who you think he is, Los. He right. really be paying attention. To I said I know that. I said I know that dad because he didn't make up the moonwalk. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I said the moonwalk that came from us breakdancing, man. Exactly. I said I, I know that. I I seen that come on the scene. I said they give him all that credit for that. I said I know he didn't make that up. And then uh, he, my dad was like, oh yeah. Um, I know the guy who, who who taught Michael how to moonwalk, and he yep. he said he used to be in the group Shalimar, I think. Shalimar, yep. Yep. I forgot uh I forgot the guy's name, but Michael something. His name Michael something too. I'm 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 not sure. I had to look it up, but he I watched his interviews and he told me. I mean, he said that uh he had learned it from watching the break dancing, and that's how he he was on Soul Train. That's what it was dancing yeah. on Soul Train. And uh, Michael performed, he saw him and said, hey, man, can you teach me how to do that? Yeah. That's how he uh, learned how to do it. Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey, yeah. Don, that's Don, it. Daniel, yep. Daniel, 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 yep. Yeah, man. yeah, man, it's, you know, the influence, you know, it's pretty much, you know, passing the torch. And people don't realize that someone passed the torch to Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also, uh, you know, Front was for, uh, it was for Prince. Like, Front, mm-hmm. he, wanted, he wanted to get that record of Prince. And he said... Yeah. Uh, he was doing his best Prince, uh, you know, impression on front. What song? What song was that? Fronting? Yeah, front with Jay Z. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. For real, yeah, that was dope to find out. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, I feel like yeah, for real, been all over the place, man. It's kind of crazy, uh, you know. Yeah. Him being a fan of Tribe, you know, VA, oh, yeah. Timberland lived next, you know, a mile away. Missy mm-hmm. Elliott. It's kind of crazy. That's, that's and cool. and and their story, their backstory, how how they got discovered, man. They was at a talent show, him and Chad. Okay, and yeah. That Teddy Riley was throwing. Teddy and, Riley. You know what I'm saying? And Teddy was like, uh, you know, they had all these beautiful singers with beautiful voices and all of that. And he was the judge of the competition. He's like, I don't, I don't care about these people who can sing just as good as, as Luther and all of them. He said these these Star Trek boys, these guys right here, the Neptunes. Yeah. They unique. They gonna win. We want them to win. You know what I'm saying? Because he just he said he was blown blown out the water with them. And as oh, yeah. you can hear those early influences of uh, Pharrell on Teddy's production too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When he started changing, when he became like zoom zoom zoom. Song. That yep. one record. Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah, man. What is um? What's your favorite era? Do you have a favorite era of hip hop, or like just production wise, or? Or sound or whatever lyricism. I, I'm, I'm gonna be biased. I'm gonna be kind of biased. Like I love hip hop totally because it all influenced me. But the Death Row era was a big influence on me because my dad was a part of it. You know what I'm saying? As well as myself. You know, like I got a song on the Above the Rim soundtrack. Man. You know? And so you know, like I got you know, my dad was heavy on the West Coast. See, I, that's one of his plaques right there. Man. The West Side Connection right there. Salute, salute, man. Yeah. Ice so Cube he, is one of my favorites, man. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he uh, the, the whole Death Row era, man, was that's like one of my favorite because I lived it. You know what I'm saying? I was getting the music earlier than everybody else, so I was like, people be like, "Oh man, you got that Murder Was the Case album? It ain't even out yet." You know? So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. And you know, just living that, seeing my dad in the videos and pointing people, pointing them out. You know, like, like that's my dad right there in Gin and Juice. You know, you know, just 
all of that stuff and them performing on Saturday Night Live, you know, that era right there was, it was personal for me. Mm. All you right. Know? What what record was, uh, you said Above the Realm soundtrack? What what record was it? Yeah, I had a bonus song. Me and me and Tupac, I didn't have a song with Tupac. My song was with uh, Lord G. Um, My Money Right. Okay. That's the name of it, My Money Right by Lord G. And um, it's spelled M-I, not M-Y, M-I-M-O-N-E-Y. Uh, my Money Right, and then Right is R-I-T-E. Yeah, it's all one word, I think. I'll check yeah, it out, but, yeah 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 it's some simple, simple production like it was the story behind that is I, I threw a beat together because i knew my dad was getting ready to be around those guys and my uncle was already around them you know around the, the death row people my uncle t money green he was playing bass for them so mm -hmm. he kept my uncle uh, t money green came in town and he came up to my dad's studio and uh, I said, Uncle Tony, man, you can't be around Dr. Dre, man. I said, you in town? I thought you was out in Cali. He said, yeah, I'm only in town for a couple of days. I'm, uh, I said, I said, man, you gonna, you be with Dr. Dre all the time, huh? He was like, he said, yeah, I'm going to be with him tomorrow. I said, oh. I said, hold on, man. So I ran to my car and grabbed a cassette tape with a beat that I had started on. Man. And I handed it to him. And I told him, I said, man, go play this for Dr. Dre. And tell him it's a guy back here who has admired his, his skills and just want to be like him. Yeah. <laughs> my Uncle Tony took the tape out there and he called me like maybe about a, about three, two or three weeks later and was like, Hey, I want you to hear something. So he plays me the song, my my beat with this guy rapping on it. And he said, This is this guy named uh his his real name is Makantu. He said he used to live in Detroit. He yeah. calls himself Lord G. He said he went to school with you. I yeah. said, what? You know what I'm saying? Crazy. He said, yeah, he picked, he picked your beat out of like 40 tracks I played for him. He picked that one. And then when I told him who made the beat, he was like, I know him. I went to school with him. We went to Henry Ford High School in Detroit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I, did, I didn't know him, though. But uh, he said, yeah. So the song, this is the song he, he rapping on. I said, oh, that's cool. He, he said, guess what? I said, what? He said, it's going on the soundtrack to a movie. Man. I said, what? I said, man, I said, well, I got to finish the beat. I didn't finish it. You know what I'm saying? It was just an idea. Yeah. He said, nope. He said, Dr. Dre heard it and Snoop and Daz and all of them, they love it. Man. I said, what? He said, we ran it through the SSL console and boost the signal so it'd be loud. You know what I'm saying? As loud as we can get it. And uh, the dog pounds, like, you can't, you, you got this got to go on the soundtrack. So they pushed, they they vouched for me for the for the track to go on the soundtrack, and so did my dad, you know, because um what happened was the um the soundtrack was done. Um you only had so much allotment as far as time on a on a CD back then. I think it was like uh 80 minutes or something like that. And so my my song and one of Tupac's songs couldn't make it because it was too long, you know, it was too much already the songs were already on there. So the dog pound and my and my dad and them was like, No, nah, this gotta go on here. And my yeah. dad was like, Sugar, you gotta listen to these last two songs. So he listened to them and he liked them. And he said, uh, all right, tell you what, I'll put them as bonus songs on the cassette. So they don't show up on the C D, they show up on the cassette tape. But man. I got my I got my plaque and I get my royalties from it. Man, that's dope, man. Yeah, that's the thing, like the physical. I feel like the physical mm -hmm. was real. I think um, uh, Mike Geronimo, he gave Pac a physical copy of the CD. Like Pac was mm -hmm. chilling inside somewhere. And mm -hmm. this, uh, he said this, he was talking to Noriega on uh, once again, Drink Champs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah, he, get, he gave Pac, Pac a physical CD and uh, mm -hmm. they friendship pretty much started after that. And um, and uh, Goody Ma was recently on there too. Um, they was talking about how uh, Pac was in, like he was locked up. He wanted to be a part of Goody Mob, like that, mm -hmm. that, that would have changed the coast, man. But uh, yeah, yeah, that so, would have. Of course, he went to Death Row Records, and yeah. you know, you know, both. I think both, uh, you know, whatever direction, it would have been definitely dope for the people. Yeah, yeah it would have. It would have. You know, I don't know how big Pac would have been because you know, by him doing his solo thing first and being on Interscope. Yeah, that was really what kicked it off for him in the beginning. But then when he got into trouble, 
you know, Interscope started turning their back on them. They didn't really want to be bothered with that type of, you know, yeah. you know, you know, conflict all the time with an artist. And they kind of left him hanging. Then that's mm-hmm. when uh, Suge went to his aid, you know what I'm saying? And supposedly I heard Snoop say recently, he said, I'm the one who told Suge to go get Pac out of jail. You know what I'm saying? He's like, we need Pac on the label. I've heard Snoop say that a couple of times. So I believe that, you know what I'm saying? I really believe that, you know, cause uh, Snoop, he wanted that com- camaraderie and he liked him. He, he always look at artists, you know what I'm saying? I got a song with Snoop too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the record? Uh, breathe it in. Mm. We it kind of like with that one. <laughs> like he put the song out, but didn't give me my credit, and so I had to get the, yeah. the you know the, the the lawyers to call him and say, "Hey man, hey, what's man. going on?" <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. So you know, you know, they we settled. You know, he went in one on and paid me some money. You know what I'm saying? Got a nice little check from it, and I get my. I own seventy five percent of the song, so I still get royalties off of it too. Dope, man. You know, what you feel about um? Mm-hmm. What you feel about Little Wayne? You know the publishing and then selling of uh, you know the catalog. What you thought? What you thought about that? I mean, I guess he feel like he's comfortable enough. You know those guys, they sold, they got so many, so much money already. Yeah, true. They feel like they feel like. So what if I I sell it? You know what I'm saying? I'm already a millionaire. You know what I'm saying? That's that's yeah. how they they looking at it from that angle. They not like us. We not millionaires. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we be like, oh no, I'm not letting this go for little or no money, man. I yeah. I got this is this is everything to me. You know what I'm saying? And he's done so much music. He's probably right. like whatever. You got like now, a, a thousand, ten thousand records out there. Yeah, <laughs> crazy you know, way, man. you know, I don't know how I would. I don't know if I would do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Because if I already, I already have money. Then, what do I need more for? What am I selling it for? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would just say, no, nah, this is, this is me. This is a part of me. I never know what this is going to be. And, you know, I got a lot of old equipment. Same principle. My dad taught me, don't ever sell equipment, man. Like I got an 808 sitting over there. I got I got two 808s. Man. Those are rare. You know what I'm saying? I got Dr. Dre's MPC sitting right here. Man. You know what I'm saying? That's his actual 3000 he used to use. So I got I got equipment that I don't sell. I just keep, you know. So my dad taught me that. He said, don't sell nothing, man, because yeah. you never know what you, you know, keep keep it for nostalgic, nostalgic purposes. And if they still operate. You can still, you never know. You might get inspired to use that stuff again. And um, he's correct. You know what I'm saying? I got all my old turntables. I got all my old drum machines. I keep stuff, man. I'm like a, a hoarder with that with that equipment. Oh, so, you with know, the music, yeah. the music is would be the same way. You know, I'm that way. I don't think I would just give my music away like that that easy. Yeah, JD, you know, Jay Dilla, he had his stuff organized like a library. It was crazy. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and I heard like a couple years ago, you know, No ID, he sold some of his. Uh, some oh, of his... I saw that too. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was like in the last year or so, wasn't it? Yeah. Might have been yeah. two, two. Might have been two. Something like that. Yeah. And then yeah, like, I thought Kanye, that was cool. Kanye West and uh, Big Sean, you know, it's it's been an argument about the masters. What you thought about that? And I probably touch on other hip hop questions I got for you. Yeah. Um. I can't it refresh my memory about that particular incident because I did read about it, but then I didn't. I don't know if I read it thoroughly. Kanye, he's, what did yeah, he say? he's been fighting over his masters or something. Oh yeah, yeah, Universal and uh, you know, and he don't and Big Sean he ended up throwing it in there like he don't got his masters from Kanye. Like Kanye owns his masters or something. Like right. That. Okay. Yeah. So that that shows a lot of uh, artists. You know they don't know the importance of keeping your masters until your records become big. Yep. You know what I'm saying? When they become big and all this money is being made off of them, then you look back like I'm the one who made that, and then you seeing that these record companies and manufacturers is making all of the the, the bread off of it. Now, of course, you want to buy that now. You want you want it for yourself, but yep. you made the initial deal too in the beginning to not own your masters because you, you well, you're not the manufacturer, you're just the artist. Yep, exactly. So, you know what I'm saying? So when you when you enter into a deal um, with a, a, a parent company for yourself, 
you already you're not going to own the masters because yeah. it's, that's what it is. It's a deal. The manufacturer owns the product. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. you know, that's just a hey, that's that's something you had to deal with when you enter into a record deal. You can't throw a tantrum. I think that's what Kanye did. He a tantrum. You was, know what uh, which, which ain't nothing new with him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you got a tantrum. Kanye story? Nah. I, I don't have one. The closest thing that I have to one is uh, you know, Royce. A lot of people don't know, you know, I DJ for Royce the five nine. That's my smooth, boy. Smooth. definitely. You know? And Royce told me recently, you know, he, he flew out to Kanye's house. He, he got records coming out with Kanye. They just not out yet. And um, I said, how was it? He was like, it's different, man. You know what I'm saying? It's real different, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just real different. And he was like, you know, and I know my brother, when he talked to me like that, he was like, like, he like, I don't know if I'm going back or not. You know, that's how I, that, he didn't say that. You know what I'm saying? But that was how he was, you know, that's the impression he gave. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, man. What's your um? I guess what's your favorite album you worked with uh, Royce with? Uh, what's your favorite album that you uh he was behind or favorite artist to work with besides like Royce? Obviously, but any stories about Royce in the studio or? Mm, well, I go to the studio regularly. I was just with Royce the other day. I don't have any production on him yet. I got production on his brother Kid Vicious. Okay. Um, so Vish, me and Vish, you know, we always together. Yeah, and he's got several of my tracks. You know, he got a song out now called uh, well, it's been out for a while. Um, Snapbacks and Backpacks. Okay. I produce I produced that and uh, I did the cuts on there as well in 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 the video and all of that stuff. So, uh, do I have any big stories? I mean, we me I toured with Royce uh and Eminem mm. last year. That was last year. We went on the Australia uh, tour. Man. Yeah. So we went to Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and it was just, it was real. It was exciting for me. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. <laughs> we in a different country. You know what I'm saying? We in Australia. So Australia is known for the exotic animals and stuff like that. You know? So we had some downtime in between each show. And Vish was like, man, I got, you know, I got people over here, man, from the last time we came over here, Los, you know, they say, uh, they asked, do we want to go to the zoo? I said, heck yeah. Mm. So we, we went to the zoo. So I'm holding koala bears. and I'm seeing the most dangerous bird in the world. They can slice you yeah. in half with one swipe and all, you know what I'm saying? So it's real weird. So I took the picture of the koala bear uh, with me holding the koala bear and, uh, we get back to the hotel and we show Royce and Royce like, man, send me that. I said, no, nah, you gonna try to clown me on IG. I ain't doing that. <laughs> I said, when I post this picture, I'm gonna do it for myself. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I said, I already know what you about to do with it. He's like, he said, no, nah, you gonna make yourself look bad. You know what I'm saying? You might as well let me do it. <laughs> I said, no, nah, bro, I'm, I'm good. So, you know, just little little stories like that with Royce, nothing, nothing major. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wish that that uh that you know there was an incident where vicious you know denying was asking vicious to come on stage and back uh Royce up during Eminem set because uh uh denying doesn't know Royce's uh lyrics like that for uh what was that caterpillar song caterpillar mm-hmm. and it's a couple of songs that they have together that Royce comes back on stage and does with Eminem. Yeah. And uh, he's like, man, I can't do your brother's part. I can't do uh, Royce's part. Can you come on stage? So um, they asked him to do it. Uh, he said, yeah, I'll do it. But uh, the administration, they kind of shot it down. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, man, I really wanted that to happen because uh, yeah. that was a good look. I mean, we were performing on, on our own, but it would have been good to be on Eminem's set, too, you know, for, for Vicious to be on that set. And it, did I wasn't, not, it didn't happen. I wasn't seeing Eminem perform. And uh, do you hold him as like the GOAT as well? Like, because I feel like him and Royce for me is like interchangeable, really. I feel yeah, they both yeah, are- yeah, they dope. Yeah. Um, as far as the GOAT, it's hard to say that. You know, a lot of people know how much I give credit to Marshall with his lyrics. You know, I've been Marshall's, a fan. Of he, he's I've a fan. I've been a fan of him since before he was, he had a deal. Like I said, I used to be at the hip hop shop. So I seen it. Personally, I used to be standing right next to him 
and when he had the hood on, and I'd be like, he about to slaughter everybody as soon as he get in this in this cipher, you know. And I would watch it personally. So um, everybody knows I'm a huge fan of Marshall. Even when when we were on tour, when uh, when he said he came, he's like, "What's up, Los?" And I, got, I was like, I held his hand like I was like, "Bro, I ain't seen you in years." You know what I'm saying? I only yeah. talked to him for about three minutes. Like, yeah, bro. I said, man, it's good to see where you at right now. That's all I can say because I remember the hip hop shop. He's like, thank you, man. And then we moved on. But um, top uh, MCs, he definitely in there. You know what I'm saying? He definitely, you know, as far as these lists that be leaving them out, they just, that's some biased stuff. You gotta He's definitely the, biased. Yeah. You got to, you, sometimes you just got to just be honest with what, um, what you're dealing with. Yeah. I think my favorite hit. My favorite year in hip hop is like, I think I mentioned it. It's 98, you know, Equimini, Jay Z came out, you know, and then Nas, of course, 94. Like, yeah, I think mid 90s to 2000s mm -hmm. is like my favorite hip hop era, just 90s period, because I'm a 90s mm -hmm. baby, 95, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, 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 that era, yeah, definitely. Would you uh, think, uh, with Scarface, because I, I I've been in question about these verses. Would Scarface and Ice Cube be a good verses? Scarface and I and I and Cube. Yeah, versus Cube. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. That'd who, be a good matchup. Who you got though? <laughs> it's like, I who I got? It's yeah. gonna be Cube. Yeah. It's gonna be Cube. You know, like I'm a I'm a I'm a fan of Face like that too, but yeah. you got more. He got more. His catalog is bigger than Scarface's too. Yeah, he got the Ghetto Boys to you know tap into too though. But yeah, I agree. Yeah, I'm a cute you know yeah. predator. You know, and the production was tighter, definitely. Storyteller. I mean, you know, far, far as far as uh, far as hip hop element like sampling and stuff like that. Now instrumentation, Face might might have him beat on a couple of songs. You know what I'm saying? He, he, had, greased, he, had, he greased his father with his hand. That's that record. Yeah, <laughs> that record yeah, right yeah. there is like, yeah. yeah, man. Yeah, my dad worked with both of them people. With both of them guys. He got credits on on Scarface uh, stuff and uh, definitely uh, Cube. Was he uh, was he on the diary? Was he on the diary or the legal injection? I don't think. I, I don't think he was on the diary. No, he wasn't on the diary. Uh. I don't know which ones off the top of my head, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I know he did percuss I know he played uh dang, what song is that? Uh dang, I know it, it's in my head, but I don't know the title right now. Uh, I know he on, on one of those. Man, uh shoot. And then I'll be, you know, probably two more questions, and uh that's that's probably all I got. Uh so favorite, because um you know, Pac versus, you know, Biggie. I had debates, who's the better storyteller? I say Scarface is a better storyteller than Biggie. I mm -hmm. feel like Q got better stories than Biggie. What, what you think on, you know, the verses? Because I, I think too. Pac got too much to pull from, of course. But yeah, Pac is... I do too. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, you know, Biggie was a good storyteller, though. You know what I'm saying? But he, yeah. uh, he painted pictures a lot. You know what I'm saying? But but like you said, Scarface was as well. Yeah. Yeah, he did that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I to say who's the better, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think uh man, that's a hard one. That's hard. Cause Biggie, he he told stories, you know what I'm saying? His was more cinematic. Yeah, kicking the dough. Um... Yeah, he had cinematic type story, like movies. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. His stories were like movie, movie uh, style, uh, as opposed to um, face. His stories were like hood stories, like people actually went through these things. Uh, Biggie was like watching a movie. He talking about gangster stuff. Yeah, you know, real, real gangster stuff. I mean, face did too, but 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 more. His was more realistic. Yeah, you know, Biggie and uh, I got the Biggie and uh. Jay Z shirt on now, oh, you know, that record was crazy. Uh, isn't it? He said, uh, he said, hit your daughter in the ankle or something. Like, what? Like, who says that? Like, oh, Biggie yeah, said, yeah, hit yeah, your yeah, daughter yeah. in the ankles. Like, what? Why? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you know, Biggie, he said some some real heartless stuff, man. When I go back and listen to his story, I'll be like, man, how did he get away with saying that? And how did I not? 
say that's ill spirited right back then. But now I'm older, you know what I'm saying? I'll go and listen to what he said. I'm like, man, he, he said some yeah. scandalous stuff, man. <laughs> you know, stuff, man. <laughs> Big Biggs was crazy, and uh, you know, he had a crazy feature with Shaq too. Like his feature list is definitely dope. And uh, mm-hmm. what was uh, I guess to wrap it up, what was like your favorite project or uh, in uh or favorite artist of 2020? Uh, you know, lyricists, you know, any favorite lyricists or LPs? Because I think Royce's album was definitely my top two off the rip. The al- with the allegory? The allegory was crazy. Yeah, yeah, you feel like that's his that best one, album? Do I feel like that's his best album? I don't know if it's his best album. I think his best album is uh, The Book of Ryan. Mm, I love The Book of Ryan, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah I like The Book of Ryan a whole yeah. lot. You know, yeah, man. tell him, man, his vocals is crazy. Like when Roy sing, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it surprised me too. I was like, he's singing like that. Well, yo, I mean, he's done it before. Yeah, yeah, he's he's done it before, but um, he really can. He really got a, a interest in learning how to sing like that. You know what I'm saying? And he can hear it. You're like, oh man, he really trying to hit the hit the notes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He might be ain't like no Fifty Cent singing or nothing like that. Exactly. You know? <laughs> He up there for me, man, because it's not a lot of rappers that actually sound good, you know, right. sonic singing. Yeah. I think Dre's up there, and, you know, the list goes on, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you got the Royce, I mean, uh, you know, the allegory for one of your favorite albums. Yo, it's one of them. Yeah, it's definitely, but uh, the Book of Ryan is my favorite, I think. I think that's his best body of work. You know what I'm saying? Um yeah, that would that would be it. But the allegory, I, it's dope, but it's up for a, a Grammy right now. You know what I'm saying? Salute, so once again, uh, I hope it wins because you know, salute the Nas too. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. But that's you know, how... he the he the bigger artist, and that's how it's, it's looking. I don't want to jinx my boy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, if if Nas win it, that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna be yeah, like, it's all yeah, pieces, Nas, nice, because it's Nas, nice, it's Nas. Nice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any other albums that was good, that you loved uh, 2020? Because like Gazelda, they always drop in heat. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Benny the Butcher, man. Yeah, I like Benny. I like Benny, and I like Conway. I like West Side too. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I got their shirt on right now. Oh yeah. I got they, they I got their tour shirt on. Hey, boo 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 boo. Love them, man. They dope as hell, man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, they they uh they definitely made a huge impact. On hip hop, you know, I don't know what West Side is doing right now. You talking about you retiring already? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That'd be crazy. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna fly, but you know, that's what they saying. So, but yeah, they definitely a lot of their music, man. You know, I'm a DJ, so my mind when you ask me about music, my mind goes everywhere because I'm like, I don't have a, I don't listen like a, a consumer too much. I'm always listening to yeah. The was hot and, and you know what I'm saying and the, and the production and you know there's a lot of things that I like about some people's stuff so I think uh, my album hmm? I think Alfredo was up there too you know oh yeah Alfredo Freddy, yep. yeah 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 Alchemist man his production more more so than um than Gibbs you know his lyrics getting Freddie Gibbs like he growing on me like yeah. I didn't look at I didn't look at him like everybody else did, yeah you know and so I, he growing on me I'm like okay I hear him now. Okay. Yeah, yeah his flow, his pocket is crazy. <laughs> yeah, put the put the put the put the yeah. Yeah, he be getting in that bag, man. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh uh, shoot. Um, I guess any other artist that's been in your rotation, and that's pretty much all I got, man. Oh man, I don't. It's man, I play some of everything, so I don't know. You know, who I like when I go riding in the car, then it'll pop in my head. Oh, I should have said this. Uh, well. Will uh, you think Royce and Eminem make a you know Bad Meets Evil three, or they definitely got some songs in the can. Like I talk to Royce about that all the time, you know, and um, he told me that uh, he and he's interested in um, getting the Slaughterhouse Masters mm. from from uh, Shady. So he he definitely trying to do that. So I don't yeah. know if it's gonna happen or not, but that's definitely something that he wants to do because he he feel like it should. It should be out because I asked him that back in the day, and I, you know, Crooked. I asked Crooked that. I said, "Man, y'all gonna finish the Slaughterhouse stuff and what, man?" Because you know, I DJ for them the last time that they performed. Yeah, we went to New, uh, not New York, uh, since where we Chicago. We went to Chicago, and I asked Crooked, "Did 
they I think they you know that he think that they're gonna finish the new albums and stuff like that. And he's like, I don't think so, man. I don't think Roy's into it like that now. Now that buttons ain't there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I guess the other question is. Is Eminem and Button cool, man? What it is it squash? Are they cool? Still not. <laughs> I, 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 it's one of them. They squashed it for the entertainment purposes. I think, you know, like mm-hmm. they ain't gonna make no records about each other or diss each other. But they still got some. It's some still some ill feelings there. Yeah. You know, I feel like I feel like Eminem probably feels betrayed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, man, I helped your career and all of that, man. You didn't have to go so hard and on my album. Yeah, you know, Joey did, you know, in the screaming is clapping. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm saying? You know, he got that forum like that, and that's what's expected of him. They expect him to be controversial, but you would think that he would be a little bit more, uh, I don't know, sensitive to the to the relationship. Like, yeah. say your family member do something to you that you don't like. He ain't gonna go blast that all over the yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? You're going to tell that person personally. You don't know, like, hey, man. Exactly. That ain't cool, or I don't like that about you, or you did this, that ain't that ain't what's up. Yeah, it's man. like, you know? it's like, uh, yeah, push your T going at Malice. Like, that's his brother. He can call Malice. Like, yes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Man. Yeah. Um, I guess any uh, projects you're working on, you said you was, you was uh, putting some tunes together when I, uh, before you uh, jumped on here. What's the oh, record? Oh, yeah, yeah. I made about 15 tracks in the last, what? Six seven days, man. I've been on a grind. You know what I'm saying? I've been. I might. I, just, uh, I might know an artist. Uh, his name is D Knight. I might send you his information. D Knight. He sound. That sound familiar. Yeah, D Knight is really from Ohio, man. He's pretty okay. good. He's in. Okay. You know, he's still uh on the come up, man. I feel like he got something to say. Yeah. Okay. But um, besides that, man, or uh, any uh any albums you working on, or any other artists you want to put on, or um. Right now, just working on on uh, getting some placement for some tracks with with Royce and uh, possibly Marshall's camp. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, the, the Almighty Dreadnoughts from here. Uh, my brother's A R E S. Miss uh, mm. Corona. I'm working with a lot of people, man. Just just you know that we just being creative and whatever yeah. comes from it. You know what I'm saying? That's dope, man. Definitely appreciate you and um. Yeah, definitely. Uh, got to do more of this, and you know, once again, uh, definitely open to talking to any uh hip hop heads that you know. Definitely voices to anybody that you like to for sure. jump on here. Appreciate you, man. Okay, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for including me, man. You know, what I'm saying oh, yeah. us old heads, man. We 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 appreciate people who who respect and remember us, and you know, things of that nature too. Yeah, we got. Yeah, I mean, we, gotta... we didn't even talk about that. You don't even know the original history of my like. I had, a, I had the first rap album out of Detroit. Okay, yeah. Back back uh, in 87, we created that album, and it came out in 88. It's called Untouchable. Uh, Untouchable. Me and my, yeah, me and my brother, Easy B. So, you know, that's my history. As um, far as uh, Detroit hip-hop, that's the beginning stages of it. I got to check it out. You said Untouchable. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's old. You know, it's dated. You know, it's old school, you know, but... Uh, it was the first album that came out. We did real well, to, and it, to the point where when I got to meet Snoop and Daz and all of them, they had bought my record. They and DJ Quick, and, you know, they like, man, we know who you are. You know, man, man I'm, I'm DJ Love. They like, oh, we know who you are. We bought your record, bro. We used to play your record every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's I'm like, oh. like we know you, fam. Yeah, <laughs> man. Yeah. But yeah, man, shoot, definitely got to dive in. You know, more history with you, and definitely, uh, because you know, hip hop, higher infinite power, healing our people. You know, uh, yeah, that's dope. Death most in, most influential genre, man. You know, and once again, RP to MF Doom, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Appreciate your brothers here. All right, likewise, man. All okay, right, conscious. Man. Peace. Peace.